Hello and welcome back to Goldner Woodland Farm. I'm Keith. It is Tuesday, uh, May 10th. Uh, tomorrow night I'm picking up new bees for uh, my bee yard. Um, I've had a problem in the last really three or four years in getting bees to overwinter. Um, so again, my bees did not make it through the winter. So uh, I've got two more uh, nukes ordered and I'm gonna go pick them up tomorrow. So I've got to get things ready this evening. So I'm gonna come in, uh, gonna mow the, mow the weeds down and to get nukes, what you do is you, uh, you bring basically this type of a hive, the bottom, the main super hive body and the top to the, uh, uh, the person that I'm getting the, the bees from, I bring that with me, and um, and he takes out. Uh, basically, he gives me. Um, there's ten frames in this hive. He gives me five frames from one of his hives with a bee with bees, um, larva, eggs, and a queen, and then you uh, wrap it stra ratchet strap it together, and bring it back here. Uh, you screw that over the top over the front so the bees can't come out and you bring it back here and set it up here so uh, What I'm going to do today again is kind of clean this up a little bit and Get these ready load them in the truck so that tomorrow night. I can just go pick up the bees So that's plan for today See what we got in here. There was a there was a mouse in the other one. We do have some dead bees in here. There were some dead ones in the other one. So maybe they just didn't have enough honey. And it could be they starved to death or, or, or got wet and cold. So there's some bees that are like they were formed in a cluster, which is where they sh what they should be doing to stay warm. see is there's no there's no honey in here so maybe that's what happened
<laughs> so this is Bill Kopar from Kopar Honey Farm. Looks good. Look good. Push them down a little bit. Every time I work on this box, I say, you really ought to move that stuff behind it. Because <laughs> I don't like working on the front of the box. Alright, honey ball. Done with that. Like I said, I was over here by... I'm up here about 3.30. These three blocks, they caught the queens and put them in... Put them in queen cages. So they don't have to run around looking for them. Oh, look at that. Yeah, but they're all like that. That's great. They're all like that. That's full of brood. Nice. Look at that. And wow. Another 3,000 bees ready to hatch. This wow, side, sweet. that's filled up with the larvae. Which is good, you want to mix, you don't want to all steal bees and you all have a big die off. Right. They all die off. I just plugged it in wax. There she goes. There she goes. So I got the bees back from uh, William Kopar, Bill Kopar's Kopar Honey Farm. Um, he is a uh, fairly um, experienced beekeeper in the area and has been uh, selling bees for quite a long time. He also uh, raises queens and sells queens. Uh, he also pollinates uh, fruit orchards uh, for money, uh, moving bees around to different orchards to pollinate the trees. Um, so this is, again, it's called a nuke or a nuclear hive. Uh, so as I showed you, uh, I took my empty hive body uh, with five frames in and five frames removed uh, down to uh, Bill's place and he pulled five frames out of one of his hives, uh, a very strong hive, and put them in here uh, with a queen. So uh, that is how one way to establish hives at your bee yard. So these bees are from the area. Uh, it's about a half hour from here. So they've overwintered, they're climatized to this area. Uh, the other way that people typically get bees are by buying a package. 
which is a box of bees that uh, generally comes from California or Georgia, maybe Florida. And um, you put those into an empty hive and then they have to start by building out uh, comb uh, before they can even begin to, you know, the queen can even begin to lay eggs and, and get things started. So, uh, and then, then you have bees that are not from the area and are not used to the climate. Uh, so, uh, so that's what we did. Uh, so the next step is to remove uh, this uh, front piece here, which is keeping the bees in. Uh, and then they'll be able to get out and start foraging. So there we go, we've established two new hives. Um, I'll come back in a, a day or so to check on them, make sure they look good inside, but uh, they, they looked really good coming from, from Bill. So one of the things, if you're a beekeeper in Western Pennsylvania, you have to be aware of bears. Um, I have quite a few bears here at the property uh, so this uh, chain link fence is really here uh, to help keep the bears out, but more importantly, um, I have this electric fence wrapped kind of around the chain link. Um, and so that's really what I'm hoping <laughs> will keep the bears out if they start uh, getting curious. Um, I did have a problem about three years ago, a uh, bear climbed over uh, the back of the fence, tore the fence down, took this... Um, this one hive body carried it out uh, way down over the hill. This was all uh, grown up with stuff, um, but I found that hive body down over the hill, probably 100 feet down there, where it was then kind of torn all apart. But um, uh, so we're all set here, and hopefully these bees will get to work right away. We've got quite a few things uh, that are blooming, trees that are blooming. Uh, the cherry trees haven't started yet, but they should be starting very soon, uh, which will be good for the bees. If you're interested in any uh, in bees or, or any of the uh, hive material, I'll put Bill's information in the description. Uh, again, it's Bill Kopar, Kopar Honey Farm. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, in particular the northern uh, or eastern area around Pittsburgh, uh, he's a a good resource. If you like these videos, please hit the like and subscribe. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. Thanks for watching.